Professor Stefan Shanuk, Russia has come in for a lot of criticism, and indeed there were proposals to suspend the, the, the members of the assembly. That's been rejected. The, the uh, assembly has ratified the credentials of the Russian Federation delegates. Was that the right thing to do under the circumstances? Because Russia does seem to feel it doesn't have to obey any international law. Yeah, this is my way. And I continued the way which we are walking since more than two years, two and a half years. Uh, it's a stony way. And I wrote in one paragraph um, that my hope is not so very big, but we have no other chance than the dialogue and uh, uh, hate or other things are not good in politics. We have to talk with them. Uh, we have to re remind their rights, but also their duties. They have to let in our relevant uh, rapporteurs. Uh, we have at the moment from the assembly five. Mrs. Owen and Mr. Schaefer as rapporteur from the monitoring committee. Mr. Zingres for uh, 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 Navalny, uh, Nemtsov case. Mrs. Everstotter for political prisoners and Mr. Mayor regarding Navalny. And the Human Rights Commissioner want, will start their mission on Crimea regarding the human rights. So that they, now, this is the basic that they can fulfill their job. And uh, the Russian Federation should be very clear. Uh, there are two red lines. One red line is not to let in our rapporteurs, and the second, not to fulfill the judgment of the Human Rights Court. On top and, of that, I gather that the um, Council of Europe School of Political Studies is still listed in Russia as an undesirable organization. That's very strange for a member state. Yeah. It's written, can you read in my in resolution? Uh, it's done by a prosecutor and uh, they have to change this uh, judgment from the prosecutor because uh, this is completely stupid and inacceptable. And it's written twice in my report. But in fact, Mr. Putin seems to ignore any sort of criticism. He just rides over it. He knows no. that he, he has, a, I was speaking to Sir Edward Lee just yesterday, and he was saying, the fact is that most Russians support Mr. Putin. They like what he's doing. They like the fact that the country has clout in the world. That, that is an argument. It's hard to overcome. No, no. The opposition in Russia is growing. The NGOs are growing under heavy circumstances they are living. And the next thing you never should forget that we gave the Russians the credentials back, so we accept, we ratified for nearly 200 million Russian citizens, the door to the European Human Rights Court is still open. And this is one of the most important things uh, if we look to the situation in Russia. But in, in fact, as I say, Putin seems to be ignoring all of this. And just today, apparently, they've warned the uh, TikTok and various other uh, social media sites to stop repeat, repeating the videos sent to them by people taking part in the demonstrations because this will encourage young people to demonstrate, which is against the law. I, how could you over? That, that's just yeah. ridiculous. No, but uh, the reaction will be that he will see that it's growing and growing. We see this uh, in the LGBT scene in Russia, which is totally under pressure. And uh, the movie from Conchita yeah, is the most download movie in whole Russia. So this is a kind of silent protest. Huh? And uh, we should not uh, misunderstand the power of such silent uh, a protest. And by the way, also a lot of famous and important human rights defenders wrote us a letter and signed, yeah, name by name, a lot of them. Yeah? Uh, don't go in conflict. Please let the, the Russian delegation stay in the Council of Europe. That helps for our work as human rights defenders, and we should also listen to them. 
because they are under fire. For me, it's nice I'm sitting here in the Hofburg yeah, and uh, no, no policeman will catch me and take handcuffs. And, uh, but they are in the fire. And so it, in my resolution, um, in the memorandum, there are two paragraphs which was impressed by the Russian human rights defenders. Can you imagine a post-Putin Russia and what would it be like? Uh, that we cannot say in reality because Russia is the only country which had never a period of democracy. Uh, do you remember the absolute monarchy was the, least, uh, the, the longest in Europe? Then comes to the revolution. After the revolution, there was no democracy. There was a dictatorship. And then it, it goes on till Gorbachev and, uh, and Yeltsin. But this was also not a complete. And the period of Yeltsin and uh, Gorbachev was short. And, um, and, and, and so they never realized and lived what is democracy and freedom of speech and freedom of press and, and no pressure by the state. And uh, I think uh, maybe there will be, I don't know, after Putin, it, the time will come after Putin. Nobody is living uh, over his time and uh, also not Putin. Also when he was jumping in the ice water for, for the 6th of November, uh, but uh, yeah, January, and but but I think what we see, and I know also a lot of um, uh, Russian, not migrants, um, refugees in, for example, in Vienna, which are running away for the for the pressure of of, of the, the court and the international police, Interpol. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that with the help of Council of Europe, we can get more and more place in, in Russia for democracy, rules of law, and human rights. Professor Stefan Shanak, thank you very much indeed.